pleasant good morning to you revival mission people and all those who are viewing on facebook pleasant good morning let me say a happy father's day to all you wonderful fathers today hard-working fathers loving fathers caring fathers oh so many things we can say about you today but i thank god that he created you to be a father today and so I pray the blessings of God upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for this is the day which you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, that you are our father. We can call upon your name, O oh God, and your present help in times of need. You are the perfect father to us, O oh God. You look out for us. You care for us, O oh God. You comfort us, O oh God. You bring joy to our lives, O oh God. And so we are very grateful today to be called your children, O oh God. And so we bless you this morning, O oh God. We say there is none like you, O oh God. We worship you, Lord, in the beauty of holiness, O oh God. We invite your presence here this morning, O oh God. We ask, Holy Father, that you would take charge and take control over our service this morning, O oh God. We pray every part of the service, O oh God. We pray that you would move through the atmosphere today, O oh God. We pray, Holy Father, even as we worship, O oh God. We pray that it will ascend to the heavens as a sweet smell and savor unto thee, O oh God. We pray that you would be pleased with our worship this morning. Bless our worshipers, O oh God. Bless every part of this service, O oh God. Bless, Lord, the word, O oh God. Everyone, O oh God, who will be taking part in this service today we ask holy spirit that you would bless and you would take charge touch lives and minister to lives this morning oh god do a great thing this morning oh god and so we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name amen and amen please remember to share this link with others all right if you're on facebook right now share the link we want as many as many people to come on to view our program this morning. Amen. God bless you. Give something to our Father this morning, a praise that is due unto his matchless name. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb of God. Bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. See, I have come to give back to you. To say thank you, Lord. I have come to give back to you, oh Jesus. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Sing with me now. I have come. I have come to say thank you, Lord.
you this morning. There is none like our God. When we think of our lives and we look on the journey of our lives, can we not say our God has been good? Oh, our God is not just good. He is really good. He is better. He is better and greater than any other. Oh, we live in his goodness. He's a good God. Oh, God, we love you. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I have lived. In the goodness of God See all my life you have been faithful Oh yes And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will say I love your voice So you have led me through the fire In darkest night Lord, you are close like no other See, I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived goodness of God. See, all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Yeah, your goodness is running after, 
It's running after me With my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything Cause your goodness is running after It's running after me Yeah, your goodness is running after It's running after me It's running after me With my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Cause all my life you have been Oh, sweet Lord, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Good morning everyone it is indeed a blessing to be here with you today um you know just being alive in a time like this is a gift that we definitely don't take for granted a special happy father's day to the fathers the daddies and the men who play that important role of a father now i always say being a man must be incredibly difficult now we do acknowledge that being a woman as well has its own challenges but sometimes we fail to acknowledge the real challenges that men face every day and from a young age men are taught that they need to be a provider and that's the main topic that i'll be talking about today just for a short while being a provider now what is a provider a provider is someone who supports and gives what is needed now when we look at the state of the world today being a provider especially in these times is a bit more difficult when we look at the COVID-19 pandemic, there were so many job losses, layoffs, closure of businesses and things like that. And all of a sudden, the money that was coming in, it isn't coming in anymore. And the one thing that you were set out to do, which is to provide, you are no longer able to do. And that brings a certain level of frustration. And it's a problem for both young and older men. We have a lot of young men starting families without the clear idea or that stable foundation needed to provide. 
Now, the inability to provide brings those feelings of embarrassment because you don't want to admit like, here's what, I need help. I can't do this. Now, the first person people often go to is their partners. When really and truly, the first place we must go to is God because he is the ultimate provider. He has been doing this thing a long time and he's going to keep doing it because he has so many children, that's you and me. And he is the best father out there and he supports and gives what is needed. So as we reach out to God to try and find the answer, one of the books that I want to look at is Matthew. So in chapter six, it talks about a lot of things. It talks about giving, prayer, fasting, and providing. But let us look at the order that the instructions are written. Now, the first thing it starts with is giving. Even before he teaches us how to pray, he teaches us how we must first give. Now, in order to provide, which is the last step, we must first give. And I didn't say to wait until you get a job or wait until your family is secure first and then see about other people. It just said that the first step is giving. Now, my dad always tells me that there will always be someone who has more than you and there will always be someone who has less than you. So even if you feel like you have nothing, zero, end of the world, bottom of the barrel, there's someone who needs something that you have and that you can give. Now, how to give? Let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. It shows us exactly how we must do this. So I'm reading from the NIV version, and it says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you now i'll just quickly share my experience with giving and how god has provided for me so earlier this year at the beginning of february i got a call from a parent and she asked me to help her son with schoolwork. now i never met her before i had no clue who she was but i had no problem helping because my dad always taught me that Having knowledge is nothing if you don't share it. So here I am helping this boy and out of nowhere, she just decides to pay me. And she wanted to do it on a monthly basis, like a job. So I told her, you know, that's unnecessary because I'm not a qualified teacher. Like, you know, I just turned 20, I'm in university and this is just like a side thing. But she insisted that I took it, so I did, right? Now, this was a big blessing because I always say that I didn't want to be like those children who constantly ask their parents for money because I know the sacrifices that they made throughout the years. So by getting this job every month, I would save it and have it accumulate. So if I ever wanted anything, I could just use that. Now, my plan was to give my first month salary as a first rate offering, and then I would start saving from March, right? And even my dad was mentioning to me that I should give some, ch some to charity because it's my first job, right? And he doesn't even come to church, but even he knows that the first step to prosperity is giving. So I gave all the money at the end of February, and on the 11th of March, I got a phone call. Now, I don't know what it is with me and these phone calls. And I'm a kind of person, I don't even like to answer my phone, eh? especially if I don't know the number. But anyway, so remember I said that the reason I was saving the money is so that I didn't have to ask. Mm -hmm. So the person on the phone was telling me that I won a national scholarship. Now, this has to be one of the biggest blessings ever because the way I was trying to provide for myself 
would never match up to the way God provided for me. Now, you might be wondering, like, what is this whole scholarship thing about? So, basically, for the next three years, all my school fees and tuition is paid for. The next three years, I have a monthly stipend that will cover all my needs. The next three years, things like books, materials, equipment, everything you could even imagine is all covered. So from that 300 that I gave, I got three years. You understand how big that is? And this is as a result of not only my giving, but also, you know, my mommy and my daddy giving in their own way, in secret. The seeds they sowed, things that I don't even know about, things they did. I was able to reap and receive those blessings. So fathers, my encouragement to you is to give so that God, the ultimate provider, can take care of your family. And giving is not always about money, huh? because there are a lot of fathers who are, pro who are providing financially, but emotionally, they aren't there. So I encourage you to provide that peace, provide that comfort, provide happiness, provide love in your home, and give these things to others who need it. Like I know of this guy, he, from the outside looking in, he looks like he has it all, the expensive cars, the house, you know, a very comfortable life. But just last week, both of his parents died from COVID. And just, just thinking about that, you could have everything materialistic, but if you don't have these simple things like love, time, that sense of security, those words of encouragement, it really make, makes you, you know, reevaluate everything. So your cupboard might be empty, but you know what? You have something that you can provide and give to people like him. So in closing, I just want to leave you with the end of Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 27, and verses 31 to 34. And I really like how it was put and I'm reading from the NIV version and it says therefore I tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes look at the birds of the sky they do not sow or reap or stow away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Verse 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. Verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So just remember that God is indeed the ultimate provider, and he is enough. And in our desire for prosperity, the first step is giving. At this time, I will pray and bless you, tithes and offering. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your many blessings towards us. Thank you for providing and supplying all of our needs, O oh Lord. Lord, as you continue to bless us, I pray that we will be a blessing to those up around us. I pray that you continue replenishing us as we give. I pray that we will continually give into your kingdom and give into your house. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I would just like to remind you of the three ways that you can give. You can scan the code on your screen that will take you directly to our online giving page. 
or you can deposit into our RBC bank account, account number 1000-990-1178-1202, or you can come into the office and give in person. You can contact the office at 1-868-304-4145 for more information. to our giving page. By scrolling on that page, you will see the option to give. Once selected, this will display the various departments to which you can give. By clicking Donate on your desired option, you can simply enter the amount that you desire to give. Hit Donate. Proceed to checkout, then enter your billing information, inclusive of your name, email address, and credit card number. Simply select the Make Payment option at the bottom of your screen, and your payment will be processed. We thank you in advance for your gifts towards the continuance of our ministry. May the Lord richly bless you. If you are interested in watching past services or even learning more about our church, we invite you to check out our website at www.rmissiontt.com where you will find lots of information about our church and even links to past services. You can also visit our Facebook and YouTube page. We thank you for listening. Please enjoy the rest of the service. Keep you strong, guide you on your way. May he 
there be many moments that make your life so sweet. Oh, but more than memories, I pray that God would fill your heart with dreams and that faith gives you the courage to dare. Oh, that was truly touching. Um, Claudine, yes. Yeah, hats off to you, Claude. Tip, Love it. <laughs> tip, uh, tip my hats off to you. Really, really an excellent job. And for so many of you fathers, you look so nice with your children around you. Um, and that's what fatherhood is all about. So today we have a special uh, service for you. Mm -hmm. It will not be preaching. It will be a little yeah. different. Yes, um, interactive. So interactive. let me um, turn over to my wife because this is Father's Day and I decide I'm not going to work as hard. <laughs> okay, remember to bring your face in the space, all right? I think that's a clothing <laughs> terminology that we learned yesterday. Bring your so, face in the space. Come on, yeah. open up your cameras. We on only ask page, this yeah. on a Sunday. We do not pressure you during the rest of the week, but on a Sunday, we, we ask you to open up your cameras, you know, so we can feel each other's presence, all right? Remember to all, did you share this link since you came on? Remember to share the link. I'm sure someone will be very glad to be a part of our service today. And if by chance words pop out from our session today, you just type it in and send it to someone, all right? We really want to have a nice time in God's presence today. And so we invite the Holy Spirit to take charge and to take control over our service today. Now, today we are going to do some interviews. First, I'm going to interview my husband. And then we have some other fathers who, we inter who will be joining us as I will interview them. And then we will finish up with some more interviews all right so we want to go right into it mm -hmm. and our topic today is fatherhood mm -hmm. all right so pastor Stephen, we want to talk a little on the roles of the father yes. and i know one of the the main thing there are four points we want to deal with today we want to deal with vision being a provider we want to deal with setting boundaries and laying aside inheritance now i know it is important to have a vision even as proverbs 29 18 says where there is no vision the people perish is it important as a father to cast spiritual vision in his home Oh, yes, Pastor Lona. Um, even as you quoted from Proverbs 29, 18, without a vision, people perish. It means if you don't have uh, a sight for the future, 
if you don't have a long term view for the future, another version say it means that you will cast off restraints and you will do any and anything. Mm -hmm. You see? So if you're doing any and anything, hardly likely that you would achieve what you want to achieve in life. Now, uh, Joshua, Joshua mm -hmm. took over from Moses. Yes. And in Joshua 24, 15, he would have said, as for me and my house, we would serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Joshua established that in his home, God will be uh, the forerunner in his home. So it means that all his children knew in this home, we serve God. Now, I, I grew up in a home where my father is a preacher, I want you to know. And because my father is a preacher, um, what happened? He, we have several preachers in the home. But, you know, um, if he didn't do that, um, we might not have been guided along that spiritual line. So seeing the father do things, um, you know, one person say, Pastor Lona, um, without you knowing whether you do it or you don't do it, you are still setting an example. True. Whether you think mm -hmm. you're not setting an example, <laughs> you're always setting an example. Whether it's a good or bad, but you're whether, setting an example. Or whether it is indifferent or <laughs> yes. nothing you're doing, you are still setting an example. And so as you mentioned that, a spiritual vision, it means that I myself in this home must set a spiritual vision for my children to want to follow. And so we encourage fathers to be to, um, to set a spiritual vision for your home and let the Lord be your God. Amen. Allah, we have divided vision into three parts. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to ask another question about setting your house in order. I mean, that's, that's, that's a powerful statement. I remember in Isaiah 38, one, when Isaiah came to King Hezekiah and he told him, listen, if you don't set your house in order, you will surely die. Give us a little, some information on how should a father bring structure to his home? Right. So if I can correct a little thing there. It, well, he was going to die. And it seems as though he did not set things in order. Right. Yes. So the scripture says, set your house in order for you shall surely die. So now all of us will die. But do you know how many people die without putting things in place? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, we are in a time of COVID where people are dying at all ages. And, and many of them not even getting an opportunity to go by a lawyer now because of the, um, how the situation is, you know? Yeah. And so they may not even have things in place. So when the scripture tell you about certain things in order, so what do we call in order? A home is structured according to how God's their home is supposed to structure. So in a home, this is the order we expect. I take this of 1 Corinthians 11, and this is the order. That God is head. Christ, then man or husband or daddy, however, man. And then the wife, then the children. That is order. Now, if, if that is mixed up, and in some homes it is mixed up, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion because the children, uh, let's say they want something, oh, this is one of the best cases ever. They say, take for example, you're going to a function with you and the children and a fire broke out. Mm -hmm. And then when you, um, you and your wife reach outside and ask, where are the children? And then she say, well, I thought it was with you. And then he say, I thought it was with you because you know what, nobody taking leadership. And so sometimes it's only in crises, then you get to realize that because I didn't set my home in order, things are falling apart, especially under pressure. Mm -hmm. And then there's a way that children relate to um, parents. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture tell you about children have to honor and obey their parents. That is, that is about order mm -hmm. also. So we go back again, God, mm -hmm. Christ, uh, the husband, the wife, children mm -hmm. if you keep that there and then if there is mutual respect and and of course um, all the principles that goes with good family living you would have a solid home mm -hmm. and so my last question for vision is the plans for the future where are you going to take your family in the next five years 10 years 20 years do you have a vision for that? Should fathers have vision for the future, for the lives of their family? Hmm. 
I want to, oh, my pause raise it. So. I may start with this song, a little negative, but I don't, we have done weddings, as you would know, yes. several weddings. <laughs> and I heard this in several wedding speeches that, that just irked me so much. Mo, my little daughter is already 25. When did she reach 25? But you know, she took 25 years to become 25. And this man didn't have nothing in place for his daughter. Mm. He had nothing in place to give her to start her new life or, her, or his son. His son had to start all over as though he didn't have a father. Why? Because the father did not put things in place for short term, medium term, and long term goals. Mm. So sometimes you cannot even stir up excitement or vision in your children because you are not planning for the future. If you are planning for the future, it would say that, okay, within the next three to five years, you want to achieve a certain thing. They're young. Um, they might not hit teens around this time. I want to do this for my children. You know, they should finish secondary school with some good passes. What would I do for this vision? Well, I had to make sure that they can't be going party every weekend because I have a vision for them to do well in school. I might have to blank them with certain things. I had to make sure that I get lessons for them. All of that is thinking, all that is vision. And then now when you're like university age and thinking again, 10 years, hey, university expensive. You see how things are happening in the country. There was a time when the, the government was able to give us um, gate, was it? And a little bit of money, you know? But now it's not so again. So you have to save, you have to put aside. Your child, by the time they reach 18 years, they are thinking about university. That is not, they can't try and save that money within that year, you know? Try to see from now. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when they get married, mm -hmm. you want to be able to say, I want you to start your new life with this. So, mm -hmm. so you are rearing children, plan for their growth and their development, and they will praise you for it. Amen. I, I just want to interject a little bit. I remember looking at this movie, City of Joy. Oh, that's an old movie. It's a nice yeah, movie you all can look at if, if, it, if you can, yes, you know, download it, City of Joy. Mm -hmm. And there was this father when his daughter was born, the first thing he thought about was wedding. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? I have to start saving. I have to start putting aside because I have to prepare my daughter for marriage. So and the culture, I, the yes. culture so he had to get a dory. Plus, <laughs> yes. he wanted to give her beauty to make her look pretty for that Beautiful, day. Beautiful, yes. yes. And he mm. was not a rich man. Mm -mm. He was very poor. He was a taxi driver. So, you know, I mean, a taxi drivers, they don't really make much money. But he endeavored to do his very best to make up that dory. So that would have been maybe 20 years. Mm -hmm. But look when he started, yes, I when know. she was a baby. And yeah. so you might say, well, I'm a poor person. I could never accomplish that. Yes, you can. Here a little, there a little. All right, great. Good, yeah. So my next question to Pastor Stephen. I know it is important that fathers be the provider in their homes. What did the Lord say about a man or father who does not provide for his home? <laughs> mm. Well, I know Celeste did a nice start. Uh, I must commend yes. Celeste. I'm so proud of her. I'm sure her parents are very proud of her. And she was talking about one of the most important rules of a man is to provide. And um, the scripture is very, very harsh. I'm telling you with these things. You see, if we fail to provide for our families, we are worse than an infidel or worse than an unbeliever. Now, what does it mean as an as a unbeliever? You say, well, if you espouse Christian principles mm -hmm. as a man, the scripture say, listen to what I'm saying here. If you espouse Christian principles, you should not eat hmm. if you don't work. Wow. Scripture tells you that if you wow. don't work, you don't eat. I tell you how serious wow. it is. It's talking about a lazy man. He said, well, people who like to sleep so late, they, they're only turning <laughs> on the bed as a door turn on his hinges. Mm -hmm. See, they're just all hours meeting them, sleeping. I'm not talking about this COVID time you have to stay inside. We are talking about a normal time where you have to be working, where you can work and you don't work. Mm 
and and, and there's some men still depending on their parents you you go there and your titties are ready and you're still putting out your hand to your mother you're still putting out your hand you, come on you have to work and so the scripture talks about that about about working hard mm -hmm. and you know people like to talk about you know don't work hard work smart you all get check the scripture and that you know the scripture tell everybody to work hard Adam worked hard and he was smart. So you have to be smart and work hard. Don't try to outsmart people by being lazy. Hmm. Work hard, work smart, invest. Mm -hmm. But definitely we have to provide. And to provide, it means that oh, just as we were talking about the level vision, yes. you have to know children need things. Yes. You know, sometimes you, we, we as fathers, we make these mothers or, or, or wives feel so embarrassed. You know, the children need pampas. Pampas again. Even pampas again. The child is eating, so the child has to let out. <laughs> Drink again, eat, oh, again. eat again, drink again. And you're sure that is the, this is the milk you want to give the child? This milk, so. Well, if you want a healthy child, you have tried to, to get the, the best milk. You want to get the infant milk. You yes. know, you want to get things that will make the child grow. And then when the child goes to school, the child asking for, for good quality um, pens and pencils <laughs> and books and the thousands. If you don't work, how would you provide for your children? Stephen, Stephen, what about a child? Who has allergies and you can't give them ordinary milk Ooh. you have to buy the most expensive milk and they have to move from dairy and all kind of oh, things boy. oh my god i remember with rebecca visits to the dermatologist because she loves swimming but this the pool water was not green with her and so she didn't want to give up the swimming i didn't want her to give it up either but you know we had to go to dermatologist or if i wasn't providing for my family how would i have done that and then listen you want to build a house you want to buy land all of that is providing providing and I, I want you to take the role of a father very seriously you we brought children into this world and this is our responsibility to make sure we provide for their needs all right so we're going to pause a bit and we are going in to do some interviews with some of our fathers this morning so i would like to interview brother dominic brown all right Brother Dominic Brown is a single parent. And so my question to you this morning is how have you managed single parenting? And I know you do not just have one child, you have quite a few children. So tell us how have you been managing as a single parent? Good morning to one and all. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. God has been good to me in that he gave me wonderful children. Um, so I can list a whole lot of things that go wrong in being a single father, but I choose to look at the positive things. You know, after coming to, to, know, to know the Lord and seeing your children grow up in church, the joy of that to me will far outweigh the negative things, the things that, that make you scoff, the things that make you quarrel. You know, the joy of seeing your children praise, the joy of seeing them worship, the joy of seeing them studying the Bible is, is, is overwhelming to me. And I, I really accept what the disposition that the Lord has placed me in. And I really enjoy the ride. I just enjoy the ride. As I said before, there are many obstacles, but I thank God that um, I have wonderful children. So God has been great to me. Amen. So what advice can you give to all single dads? I would say, love your children. You know your children, didn't come to be in this world by chance. You was a major contributor to your children being in this world. And so many times in society now we see fathers just, just being the sire to a child and, and that's it. They turn their back. But really and truly, I would advise single fathers to love the children, to 
to have to want to have conversation and spend time with their children. So many fathers don't even know what what some of their sons are going through, some of their daughters are going through. You know, I would really encourage fathers who are single to love their children and and know that they are your responsibility. Many times we like to throw responsibility on the mothers. And we say, you take care of that, but the father have a greater role to play in the life of a child. And I would really recommend that fathers, single fathers that is love their children and want the best for them. Perfect. Dominic, I, I want to really commend you. You have me high in your admiration. Um, let me see if I can remember all those children. Ashanti. Nicholas, Jaden, Talia. Right, good. Two boys, two girls. And um, I know you as a very hard working man, very, very hard working. And um, you are out plenty, like, like those birds, and always bringing back something for them children um, to eat. You know, but if it's one thing I, I, I must say, your um, fatherhood is not without challenges, as so many others are. Um, but sometimes men run away from, yeah. from this because of the challenges. So your rule today is saying, if you love them, they'll be able to handle the challenges better? Yes, I think so, Pat. I think um, after coming to know the Lord and experiencing the love that he displayed on behalf of all of us, I think we, it, we um, that is our duty to really love our children as even he has loved us. And when you do that, or even when you try your best to do it, then you see the fruits, then you see the fruits manifesting in your children. And it goes on and on from generation to generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much, Brother Dominic. And I know your children, they do love you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even as you spoke about all of them are in the Lord. Listen, Jaden, Jaden could memorize, memorize the entire chapters a of entire Bible, chapter yeah. of the Bible by just like that. So I yeah, yeah. want to thank you for being a good role model for your children. All right. My next dad here is Mr. Roshan Samraj. Hi, good morning. Pleasant good morning. Happy Father's Day to you, Roshan. Happy Father's Day, Roshan. Happy Father's Day to everyone. Yes. So you are in a blended family. I would like you to tell us about your blend and how has it impact fatherhood? Sure. Um, so I am I'm a, uh, from a different race from my wife, different religious background. And for me, um, it's about respect. So whilst we have the different backgrounds and so on, it's about finding what are the things that connect us together as a, as, as a, a, in first meeting my wife. And it has a lot to do with the value systems. So whilst everyone might come from different backgrounds, how they grow up, religion, race, and so on, the thing that unifies people and bring them together sometimes are the common understandings. So for, for me and my family and my wife, it's about the principles that guide us, what we believe in in terms of how we view family and how we view um, the lives that we want to lead. So whilst we are from different backgrounds, the common goal for us is, is those things. And that's, that's what helps guide us, right? So that's the first part. And it's also about respect, respecting the individuals and their differences. Right, and I see fatherhood in terms of that as no different from any normal family because the same principles would apply, right? Which is in terms of, you know, loving your children and you're, you all have already gone into many of the areas, which is like providing, you know, creating that right environment and so on. So, but for me, I would just want to touch on two, three areas. One is that respect. Right. in terms of that individuality and two in terms of 
uh, leadership. So you all mentioned in terms of working hard, I see that as extremely important. So my kids see me working hard. So even when I'm not at work, um, they see me in the yard doing stuff. They see me doing things around the house. They see me managing the home. So throughout, they see that level of leadership taking place in terms of guiding what takes place in the home. Of course, with my right hand, which is my wife, right? Um, you know, so we, because we do things together. And one of the interesting thing is since last year due to COVID, I've been working from home. I've been fortunate to be working from home. And so that my, my kids see me working all hours of the day and night. So before, when I was away from the home at work, they would see the hours I would come home and so on. But now they're actually seeing how intense my day is, how much hours I put in. And I still try to make the time to, to spend time with them in terms of other areas, which comes to my next point, which is sacrifice. Everything that I do, and I think this is, again, I think this is no different for any parent in any family. Um, it's about sacrifice. And when I say that, I say it to mean putting my children first. Mm. So I always put my children first in my thoughts, in everything that I do. And even in the fact that it motivates me to work even harder in, in terms of my job. So everything I do is about sacrificing for them and you all touch on some of the areas in terms of providing for the future, the education, wedding. I'm not too keen on the wedding part just yet, right? <laughs> we could talk about that one just now. They have two girls, right? So, you know, I'm very cautious, right? <laughs> you know, so it's about providing, but so sacrifice is a major part of it. And you can only sacrifice if you understand you know, who you're putting first. And I put my children first in everything that I do. So I, and uh, not to be mere materialistic, but I, I don't look at anything for myself, right. material wise or otherwise. I look at what would my kids need, right? For their development, for whether it's school, whether it's the sport that they're in, right? And, you know, I always put that first. So whilst I might have a jeans that I went and went for the last 10 years, my kids, I will try my best to make sure my kids are in tune with the, you know what I mean? With and what the want, right? Yes. And that is the sacrifices we have to make as parents. And we must not look at it as a burden. Because it's not. Because the greatest joy for me is seeing my kids, um, you know, get the things that they want in life and achieve their full potential. Right? So right. once we sacrifice, we must not look at it, oh gosh, I had to do this again. You know, why this had to be so hard? You know, no. It's about doing things in a positive way. And that's what parenting is about also in terms of being positive. And I know Ms. Mendoza wants to just to say one last point. Let me hear your last point. <laughs> I'm being trained yeah. in the back here. <laughs> and my last point is creating the balance in the home. And it's about ensuring the right environment is created and ensuring that my kids have an environment where they could realize their full potential, whether it be in education or sport. Amen. I remember um, your wife speaking to me some time ago. We had a little get together at home and she was saying um, she doesn't normally buy clothes for the children. Every time you go away, you would bring all the children's clothes so now lockdown when now that we are in lockdown she has to find out where to go and get stuff and i find that was so admirable yes of i'm you very good at you, their clothes yes, and as stuff, you talk so. about <laughs> your you're always thinking about them and i really admire that so hats off to you Roshan, because Roshan. i got banned <laughs> i got banned from from bringing clothes oh, yes. and I got banned because of the sizes and everything and you know they say daddy like you see that baby on the bed when they buy this thing for me so so what advice would you give to a father who may have ha have fears getting into a relationship 
with someone who may have children and he may have fears he is not sure if he will be a good father. Quickly, can you just give a little advice on that? Um, sure. Uh, again, I would look at it in this way. Um, of course, they, they must be that they like the person that they're involved with. That's one. But also they must understand that it does not come as just that person because the person has, has children. So they must understand that they have to like the individual, but also be able to take responsibility for the children, right? And they must understand that that is the role. So, you know, trainees have a way we like to change things up, right? So when we say responsibility as a trainee, we mean only when we feel like it, or, mm -hmm. you know, um, on a Saturday or Sunday only, or that, you know, we like to change things up. But the responsibility, the true definition is that taking responsibility all the time. So they must understand that when they do it, they do it as a, you know, you know in terms of the whole package, so to speak. Yes, and, yes. And not just that, you know, because I, 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 I like the, the lady. I love the woman, you know? yes. Yeah. You right. know? So, so the so children, children is not like an appendage. Yes. Yes. So it's total responsibility and be able to understand that one of the greatest things in life is shaping an individual to be add more value to society. And we, we tend to take that for granted, right? And that's what being a parent is about and raising children and being a father and a mother. And we tend to take that for granted and, and not understand how important that is, right? And it's reflective in our society in terms of how that is looked at, right? So the society we want to create starts with what we do as individuals, right? And one of the key things is we must understand that it, be, it, it starts from being responsible and taking full responsibility for the roles that we play, whether it is as a husband, whether it is as a father, a mother, et cetera. Thank you so much, Mr. Samraj. God and it seems as though we had to get to again, Roshan. You had so much to yes, say. Yes, you have Thank a lot so to much. say. Thank you so much. We want to remind you of your viewing. Please share, share on um, Facebook, share on your Zoom, share the link. This is real good stuff. We want people to hear it all around the world. Okay, Who do so we have next, Pastor Lona? Brother Robert Johan. Robert Johan, yes. He's also my uncle, my hairdresser. Yes. So, Brother Robert, pleasant good morning. Tell us your experience of how you took care of your nephews and still taking care of your sister. Morning to you all. God bless you all. Happy Father's Day. Um, well, as you know, we never really had a a uh, good father figure. We grew up in an abusive home and, you know, we was never really taught that love, you know, but our mother, what she could have given to us, she gave us, she gave her best. But um, it's Sandra really bring out that love into me, that care, that ambition, you know, and um, I remember going to the cosmetology school when I came home I used to see her you know not no no one shower her nothing and I used to say wow you know she need this care she is a special child you know and um because everybody who married and went and who they're busy about their life you know so she was left alone my mom had to work she was the breadwinner and, you know, so I used to take her, beat her, powder her and all these things. And apparently that's where the love come in. That's the connection that, you know, both of us had from there. And she was only about three, four, five. Mm -hmm. You know, I remembered again when her first periods come that, you know, it was, oh my God, it was tough for me. It was really, really tough, but I overcome the 
challenges, you know, and um, it, it was challenging and time consuming after my mom passed away, I took full responsibilities. Mm. She, she, she will be 40 years December coming, wow. but wow. she's it's mine like a child, you know? Yes. I, I think it's long time, and it? love and time. It was challenging for me, you know, but um, she, she, she's, a, she's a child full of love to the Sandra does everything for herself. Mm -hmm. She's so talented and she bring out that love for, to me towards that. She brings out that love, that true, true love. I have learned to care and love for each and every one, not only family, but other people in challenges, blessings flows. Now, mm. if I had a in her too, where that blessing, she's such a blessing. She bring out something that I did not have. Right. You know, and she bought all that in me. And I really, really thank God for that. And with my nephews, I, I had three nephews. Um, grew up by me, it was challenges, challenging, you know, yes, was boys again, so you have to be on your heel. Mm -hmm. I had to send them to school lesson, give them an allowance, provide for them, you know, um, when they reached 18, you know, it was a different game, they wanted to go out, you know, but I, I make sure I spend time with them, I discipline them, I love them, I teach them to respect themselves, and others and taught them moral and values and to be God fearing. Hmm. So it meant that sacrificing for you would not have been difficult because of the love that exactly. you had for Sandra and Sandra yes. has for you. Yeah, it I was did very easy to sacrifice. Love. Yes. You know, and he made it easier on me. Amen. So what advice can you give to siblings? Who have the same responsibility where they have to also take care of their brothers or sisters or, niece or, or nieces nephews. or nephews. What advice would you give them? Well, I will advise them to see God first mm -hmm. and time build a relationship, you know, and um, build a relationship with them, love them teach them moral values, positive role model, honesty, humility, and responsibilities. Be a good teacher. Do not worry about perfection. Connection is more important. You know, make that sacrifice for your sibling is worth it to the end. You know, it's a lot of sacrifice and yet it comes in. You know, and um, you know, when you're abundant, your child, you abandon your blessings. You know, even my, my older siblings, all of them call me for advice. You know, I'm a mentor to each and every one, you know, not only family, but to other people. And, you know, challenge, challenges make a person bitter or better. And I become a better, more loving human being through the challenges I face today. Amen. And, Thank you so much. And you know, if dad isn't defined as the man who makes the child, but rather I the man do. who raises and loves the child with his heart through yes. anything, blood, doesn't always make a man a dad. Being a dad comes from the heart. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderfully Wonderful. said. God bless you, my yes. dear. Thank you so very much. Our last interview, we did an interview um, with my dad from a grandfather's perspective, and this is the outcome of the interview. Elated, 
and the reports of the grandchild related. But being a, a grandfather, you have to set standards. And by setting standards, it will be a generation thing. So your children, and then from your children, you go to the grandchildren. I was so lucky and fortunate to be always there for my grandchildren, to be of help to them in so many ways. From kindergarten, primary school, and secondary school. And, and the standards that, that I set after all these years, I could see that they bear fruit. And I'm so happy to still be around to enjoy <coughs> and to, to enjoy their company now. Yeah, my most cherished moment as being a grandfather. Hmm. That's a ticklish one way. Because all those moments were so um, so fruitful and intricate that to really, you know, cipher out which one. I think all, all was, was great at moments. Just being around everybody. But I thankful for God to, to be in there for each and every one. So I just, I'm happy and glad to be alive, to see that all the grandchildren reach mat maturity and almost maturity. Well, <clears throat> after certain standards of a, a I am a grandfather. I think that that covers the children and the grandchildren. And um, the important thing is to, to for, the important thing is being there for them whensoever they need you. You're always there for them. Yeah, well, what I want to say about them, grandfathers, I, I think I did a great job being one. From one to ten, I think I, I, I do pretty well. And I hope that um, all grandfathers will try to emulate me in this, um, in this life. Do the best they can. That's why they laugh. Because so, after, after you're through, you could sit back and relax and say, well, a job well done and thank God for all the goodness that he has bestowed upon us. But before I say, say that, I, 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 I want to leave my watch, you know I like to leave my watch words with you. If, if sorrow never claimed our hearts and every wish was granted, patience would die and hope depart and life will be disenchanting. Happy Father's Day. Thank you so much. One of the, the things that really jump out to me is being dear for your children, 
fathers, grandfathers, just being there for them, loving them, caring, being that support unit. Oh boy, so, so important. Well, we will, we're bringing it down to a close. So I have two more questions to throw out to my husband here today. And uh, one of the questions that I want to ask is, who should be the one to discipline the children in the home? I think that's a real um, ticklish um, situation because plenty of times you find um, it has been neglected by the father. So tell us today, who should be the one to really do the disciplining? Okay, as you mentioned, neglect by the father. I want fathers to know that again, the Bible sees us as the head of the home. And being the head of the home, we do not abdicate responsibility. We embrace responsibility. And I do not know who could ever have a home and not have to deal with discipline issues. Not have to deal with discipline issues. So I believe you have to be a very smart person knowing, hey, my child would do things to get me upset. Right. But even before the child does it, I should think about it from now and say, if my child does so-and-so, what would I do? How would I punish this child? And so there's so many myriad ways of punishing that they don't have to uh, abuse. We don't believe in abusing children at all, at all. But I believe a father is the real person for discipline in the home. So I do not know what it is about children, why they give mothers so much oh, uh, trouble. Oh, yeah. And especially boy children. Tell me about Sometimes they, it. you know, they're so small. They're only five years old and they, not, they don't want to listen to the mother. But when the father talk, every man started walking Stephen a and the line. mothers will beat them more than the fathers. They will get more strokes from the mothers. I know, I know. So fathers have to understand, we don't only want you to talk when, you, when your wife or the mother here stand up straight in your head and all that. No, you, you must come in very early and set certain things that you will accept and you will not accept in your home. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that I learned about the laws of our country and parliament is that parliament never expires. Why? Because there's always new things happening and new rules, and these rules have punishments with it. Right. So it means to say that if a person does something wrong, even though that law might have been 10 years old, there's already a standard and a limit for punishment. What, what am I coming with? I am saying, if your child does something like in my home, I do not exceed three strokes. And very rare, very rare. So the, the last resort is ever to come with the rod. But these are the guidelines that I use. Never exceed three strokes. Never scold when I am angry. Don't say things to my children that I would regret. Don't say anything that will demoralize them or assassinate their personality and their character. Um, when I, and, and, and if I cannot control myself, like I cannot use abusive words and curse my children. Exactly. If I am yes. not disciplined for myself, then mm -hmm. I cannot expect my children to produce what I myself cannot even produce of myself. Yes. So if I lose control, you know, they have their fathers have lost control oh. and they kick mm. their sons and daughters. They, they beat them, beat them so badly, lock them up in a room, oh, tell them done abuse. and all abuse these children. But yet you want to try to bring good out of these children. You, you, you feel you could curse some morning tonight, but you want your children only to be saying hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Discipline starts from the head, and that's why I believe the box stops with the head. Yes. And, and the wife, I believe, is to uphold Correct. uphold the mm -hmm. discipline measures that yes. was introduced in the home. Oh, thank you so very much. We really needed to hear that. And so our last question to Pastor Stephen. Tell us about laying aside inheritance for our children. 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 <laughs> generation to come yes you give know, us the different ways how we can right lay aside inheritance so we talk about and a lot of the other fathers talk about providing and talk about vision but you know i've also known that people who dream about the future the future became the present and nothing happened in their life 20 years 30 years passed and none of these dreams came to pass and it happened because you did not budget for your vision mm -hmm. Not because you want your child to go to university, mean that all you will do is keep praying and they're declaring 
and they all can come off of your mouth, but you would not put aside money for these children. Uh, one of the fathers, I think, um, Roshan mentioned about sacrifice. Uh, you may see a piece of land to buy and tell you that thing may cost you so, so much. But if you don't sacrifice, then there's nothing to leave for your children. There's nothing to leave for your grandchildren. So we must learn to put aside, put aside. And there are so many uh, tools. There, there's insurance policies, there are mutual funds, there, you know, there's savings, there's so many things. There's even uh, uh, doing a little job at home other than your main work to, to, to bring other streams of income. And then you take that income and you invest it or you save it for the future. It is so important. So the scripture told us uh, a good man lay up an inheritance for his children's children. Yes. Now, why the grandchildren? Because sometimes these investments take so long to be realized that you may not even enjoy it, nor your um, children, but your grandchildren may. Yes. And so if everybody adopts that, that means you will never really skip a generation. Because really and truly, Lorna and I, uh, we benefit Pastor from your what audio cut. Okay, you hear me now? Yes, sorry about that. Lorna and I benefit from what our... Not hearing that one also. No audio. No audio. Josh? I'm hearing you, Pastor. I don't know what's happening with Rima's mic. I'm hearing you. Okay, so Rima... I'm hearing you. All right, so we had the Lord help Raymond with his mic in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, so I want to close up with what I was saying now. How we benefited Yes, our right. Yeah. So the land and the property that I have in Rosilla was from my grandfather. The land that we are living on right now is from your oh, oh, grandfather. Still no audio, eh? Yeah. Yes. So what I am saying here is that we want to thank God. We want to thank God for this opportunity to know that we lay aside in here. My, my, my parents didn't even get a chance to live on the land that their children are living on. And it's the same way the things happening here. So you have to understand when you invest, invest for your children's children, and your father should have done that, and that means you would not skip a generation. So I am challenging you all, build a house, buy land, mm -hmm. invest, do something that when you lay down in your bed, you can see this is for John, this is for Janet, this is for this, this is for this one. Don't just say, well, I give all your, all your food and all your clothing and all are done with that. No, you are a child, you're, you're, you're espousing Christian values. We think very, very firmly about the future. Amen. Thank you so very much, Pastor Stephen, and all those who came on to do the interview with us today and all those who participated in our service today. We are very thankful for your participation and your presence. And so bear with us a little. We are coming to a close and we have one more item on our program. Before we go to that item, I have an announcement to make. Last, you all would know that um, an important part of Revival Mission is our Missions Arm, International Missions Ministry, IMM. And I just want to put out the information there that on the 14th of August, we are going to again have our virtual prayer meeting from 7 to 9 a.m. We are telling you now because we want you to prime up for that, and we also want you to start to pray about it in advance. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this item is dedicated to all our fathers on this special occasion. Upon the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard these angels singing And someone called your name You turned and saw this young man And he was smiling 
as you can And he said, friend, you may not know me now And he said, but wait You used to teach my Sunday school And I was on the air And every week you would say a prayer One day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. So thank you for giving to the Lord. Cause I am the light that was changed. Then another man stood before you Said, remember the time A missionary came to your church His pictures made you cry And you didn't have much money But you gave it anyway well, Jesus took the gift you gave And that's why I'm in heaven today so thank you for giving to the Lord I am the light that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so One by one they came Far as your eyes could see Each life somehow touched By your generosity And it was the little things you done Sacrifices you made oh, They were unnoticed on this earth In heaven now not supposed to cry but friend I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord he said my child look around you for great is your reward That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. I am so glad. We are so thankful that you tune into our program today. This program is not complete unless we give you an opportunity to increase hope in your life by accepting the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Say this prayer after me. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins and become my Lord. If you have said this prayer, you are forgiven and you are saved. 
Communicate with us through the following contact information and we'll get right back to you. Let me declare the blessings of God over your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for tuning in. For prayer, you can contact us at 304-4145 or email your request to needprayer at ourmissiontt.com. For more information on services and events, visit our website at www.ourmissiontt.com. To access today's service and much more, like and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you all.